Steele shows his mettle to bat Durham into a strong position. The weather brought an early end to day one, Sussex on top with the ball as Durham struggled to cope with their bowling attack under leaden skies. They resumed on 92 for seven, the home side hoping to avoid the ignominy of being bowled out for under 100. They didn't have the best of starts though, two wickets in and over from Ollie Robinson, seeing Sussex pick up where they'd left off. Pointer was trapped LBW for 14, before Matt Salisbury lasted just four balls before being bowled for a duck. Four runs from the bat of Chris Rushworth would bring the 100 up, but Durham's innings was wrapped up just four balls later, Robinson picking up his fifer as Nathan Rimmington was bowled for five. Durham all out for 103, a score well below what they'd been hoping for, and it had been Robinson who'd been their main tormentor. He finished with figures of five for 29. However, for all their dominance with the ball, Sussex's start with the bat was one to forget. Tom Haynes lasted just five balls before he was caught behind off the bowling of Rushworth in the first over out for a duck. Phil Salt would follow a few overs later, Rushworth again with the wicket, this time the catch from Graham Clark. Luke Wells was the next to go, Matt Salisbury bowling him for nine. Harry Finch and Michael Burgess did take Sussex past 50, but Rushworth came roaring back, Finch offering no shot and the ball bowling him for 12. That was Rushworth's 400th first class wicket and he wasn't going to have to wait long for his 401st. Ben Brown trapped LBW for 10 in Rushworth's next over. The Durham man was in fine form. He picked up his 21st first class fifer in his next over. Michael Burgess caught by Clark for 18 and with another Rushworth over came even more destruction. Chris Jordan bringing the best out of Will Smith. His fantastic catch, seeing the Sussex man out for nine and the very next ball, Jofra Archer was out for a golden duck. Bowled by Rushworth, seven wickets now to the bowler's name. He'd have to wait for his hat-trick ball though. Lunch taken, Sussex 96 for eight. Robinson would prevent the hat-trick as they resumed, fending Rushworth off, but he couldn't be kept out of the wickets for long. A bit of juggling required Robinson caught by Collingwood at slip, out for 14. Matt Salisbury brought the Sussex innings to a close. David Visa trapped LBW for 25. All out for 122, a disappointing lead in the end of just 19. Chris Rushworth's figures of 8 for 51, just one more scalp away from beating his career best. Risen to the challenge, certainly set by Sussex's bowlers, and he dragged Durham back into the game. Durham's start to their second innings was in stark contrast to their first. Steele and Lees batting solidly, their partnership soon worth 50. Lees was the first man to go, but not before he'd helped Durham to 72. In the end, caught behind for 43 as Robinson picked up his first of the second innings. His wicket would see T called, Durham cruising at 72 for one at this stage, a lead of 53. Will Smith joined Steele as play resumed after the break and Durham looked to strengthen their position. They had to do it without Smith though, he fell to Joffre Archer for four. Steele was in determined mood and brought up his 50 with a boundary off the Sussex paceman, taking his side past 100 in the process. By the time Archer had Graham Clark trapped LBW for 21, Durham were edging closer to 150. Michael Richardson stuck with Steele, the pair piling on the runs, Steele bringing up his 100 as his side took control of the match. They'd taken the score to 194 when Richardson was removed by Robinson, caught behind for 19. But Axel Patel would join Steele and take the side past 200, surviving through to the close of play, Durham going in at 220 for four, leading Sussex by 201 runs with those six wickets remaining. Durham then have a chance of causing an upset in this match, their lead already significant considering the overhead conditions and if they continue in this fashion, that advantage could grow in the morning. Sussex will be determined though, with Warwickshire dominating Leicestershire and Kent on top at Lords, they need to get a result to stay within touching distance of their rivals at the top of Division 2.